Yeah, the Alleluia has been, stay standing for a moment here. The Alleluia has been buried throughout all of Lent. And I know that we're not all fully practiced to follow the cantor, so we're all a little bit hesitant, but I think we should be able to say together, just get out of our system and say uninhibited, Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs> you may be seated. Throughout much of the church, not just the Christian East, East it's, it's very uh, popular to say, and you may not know it, but it's a wonderful tradition throughout so much of the world. Um, Christos Anesti, and the response is Alethos Anesti, which is Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. So you may know, if you've been around here much, that when we deal with uh, complicated and abstract propositional truth, often from St. Paul's epistles, I find it very helpful to find an analogy that makes a complex uh, theme more relatable. So I began to think about, well, what might be an analogy for tonight? But then I realized there's no further analogy needed because the whole liturgy with its picture and its symbol and its incarnational uh, uh, physical symbols gives us an analogy of itself. We have two dominant themes, water and light. So what more analogy could be needed for that than how our Lord has redeemed the world? This is truth incarnate. It is self-relatable as we relate it to Christ's redemption in a fallen world. So what do we have rehearsed for us tonight as we have the new fire and then we begin to move towards the renewal of our baptism? This is nothing less than the renewal of creation. Let's think back to the first reading that we heard from Mady at our lectern. The world was formless and void. In the Hebrew, tovu vabohu, chaotic, stirring. But then the spirit was hovering over the waters. And then shortly after, let there be light. Creation was true, it was good, and it was beautiful. But that original goodness has been marred, and we face the darkness of that daily. But here tonight, we recall how eternity broke into time and brought light into darkness. And in this, ultimately, Christ brings about a new creation in his own person. And so it is, we will march to the font very shortly as we remember that we were baptized into what is his death and resurrection. And what does this mean? It means that we are recreated in him. That new creation becomes pre present in our very selves. As the exalted was chanted at the Paschal Cantle when we entered the dark church, we heard, oh, happy fault. That happy fault of Adam. How is it happy ever? But the fact that it sends us to Christ, to our redemption, which brings us higher than we were before. We call this Adam's check mark. He went down, and Christ brings us even higher. Christ is raised. He was truly raised. And in him, we, you and I, are higher than humanity ever knew before him. And so it is. Our whole liturgy tonight is a crescendo getting gradually louder, so to speak, as we recognize and we embrace the fact that we, as Paul said in our epistle that was just chanted for us, 
We receive newness of life as we are dead to sin and alive to God. And so in this, we finish our 40 days of preparation. But as St. John Chrysostom so famously said, all are called to come, first and last alike, to receive your reward. Rich and poor, rejoice together. And as I share excerpts from his famous Paschal homily, to you, come, come to receive this redemption. Ultimately at the altar, after we renew our baptismal vows, who is that? Sober and slothful, celebrate the day. You that have kept the fast and you that have not, rejoice today for the table is richly laden. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. He put it into an uproar even as it tasted of his flesh. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, O oh, death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And that is why, if there's a first fruit, there must be a harvest, as I depart from St. John Chrysostom now. If you can't have one without the other, and this is why we say to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. This is what we call good news. Words we've gotten used to, translation of the simple word gospel. That word in the Greek, evangelion, was a word that Caesar used to put forward his good news that he had won a battle. When that word went forward, it was called the evangelion, okay? And so that was that those very same words were adopted by Christians, used for their own purposes to proclaim that a greater Battle has been won. Life over death. Conquering death by death. And to what end? To what end? Not just to take us out of the world, though yes, now we can depart from the world with confidence and without fear. But because we have no fear, and we do not even fear death, we can give ourselves to transform this world. We bring out into a dark world the light that has dawned upon us tonight, and we cleanse it with baptismal grace. N.T. Wright said, Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project, not to snatch people away from earth to heaven, but to colonize earth with the life of heaven. We receive a foretaste of that life today. And so what does this mean? We bring forward that new creation. Those chaotic forces, the tovu v'bohu, are repurposed by you. By how? By works of love and your prayers. That's why, as the liturgy continues tonight, no brief liturgy. We're not just watching. We're not just being, being stirred up spiritually by watching what goes before us. No, by being here, you are doing something. This liturgy is for you. And as you pray throughout this liturgy, you are turning the wheels of redemption. You are 
God works through our prayers. And through your prayers tonight, you are calling upon his spirit to renew the church. Yes, to renew you, to renew your families, to renew the whole church to go forward and transform this fallen world. This happens as we invoke the saints. This happens as we pray for the church by invoking the saints at the baptismal font. As we renew our baptism, something happens here. Own it more. You will leave tonight different, washed clean, impervious to darkness. Indeed, you are light in the Lord.